So a couple of weeks ago, the British government surprised many by adding the Canary Islands to the travel corridor list, meaning it is now considered safe for Britons to travel there without quarantining. A few months before that, Wizz Air also surprised people by opening a travel base at Gatwick Airport. So the planets have aligned, and today I'll be travelling on Wizz Air from London Gatwick to Tenerife South. So come with me and let's see what the experience is like. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've travelled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe to the channel so you can come with me. Another early start. And once again, I took advantage of the discounted short-term parking offer at the South Terminal. £31 got me three days parking immediately adjacent to the South Terminal, which is great value. The mainline train station arrives at the South Terminal, so even though all flights are leaving from the North Terminal, they need to keep the South Terminal open, even if they are saving a few quid by not turning on the moving walkways. It's an eerie experience to pass through a terminal that is usually so vibrant. Unlike the airport trains I'd used at Heathrow and Stansted, Gatwick's intra-terminal train was very lightly used, so social distancing was not an issue. Check out my video about my flight from Cologne to Stansted to see how not to manage passengers on airport trains. Wizz Air's check-in area is a little tucked away and isn't huge, but as with most low-cost carriers, making baggage decisions well before leaving for the airport is likely to produce the cheapest outcomes. Wiz will not miss an opportunity to charge you. Leading aviation YouTuber and fellow baldness enthusiast Noel Phillips recently booked a Wizz Air flight with an ad blocker in use on his laptop. Wiz charged him a system surcharge of £8.50 per sector, which Noel assumes was compensation for the revenue they'd lost in not being able to serve him advertising during his booking journey. Wiz claims that fee isn't linked to using an ad blocker, but advised that the way to avoid it was to turn the ad blocker off. I don't use an ad blocker, and I was not charged that fee, so draw your own conclusions. Noel's excellent video is linked in the description. Look out for my upcoming video about my return flight, when I think Wizz Air tried to trick me into incurring an additional fee with them. But having said that, if you keep your wits about you, you shouldn't be too concerned about booking with Wizz. So to security. Very quiet that morning, and I was through with Gatwick's usual efficiency. Straight into the duty-free shop, of course. Ours was the first flight of the day, so some retail was not yet open, but Pret was, so I headed there for a quick breakfast. And to the gate. Lots of newspapers to choose from, although all of them were yesterdays. A bit of a line-up at the gate. I assumed that was because they were checking that everyone had completed the Spanish passenger locator form, although when I got to the head of the queue, it was just the regular passport and boarding pass checks. Not sure why it was so slow. Boarding swiftly began. Wiz sells priority boarding, but also attaches it as a perk when you pay for luggage. If 60 or 70% of passengers end up having priority boarding, it does kind of undercut the exclusiveness of that benefit. I was alert to Ryanair's trick of buffering passengers on the air bridge, so held back until I was confident that the passengers were flowing all the way through to the plane. Well, I was wrong. Wiz Air also buffers people in the air bridge, only it was a really, really long air bridge which held virtually all the passengers. It wasn't that long a wait though, and as a rainstorm had just passed, we were directed outside to paddle our way across the tarmac to board via the back steps. Our plane was an Airbus A320 delivered to Wizz Air UK two and a half years ago, and pretty nice it was too. With the priority boarding having such take-up, there was no effort made to stream passengers on board. Then, one of the happiest things you can hear when travelling economy, when the seat next to you is empty and no one is standing in the aisles. Boarding complete. This was the sixth takeoff I filmed, and from this experience I now know that pre-dawn takeoffs in the rain are unlikely to produce award-winning footage. 
We took off in a squall, and there was quite a lot of rudder work needed in the cockpit, as we did lurch down the runway somewhat before getting airborne. Our flight took 4 hours and 11 minutes. It's easy to forget that Tenerife is further south than Cairo. We left the UK overhead the Isle of Wight, clipping the edges of France and Spain before heading out into the Atlantic. The seat is reported on Seat Guru as having 28 inches of pitch, although it felt like more. Even without a neighbour, I feel that my legs would have survived the flight. A table, although it was quite high. No recline, and as you'd expect on a low-cost carrier, no Wi-Fi and no in-seat power. I'd paid £19.49p for my flight to Tenerife, plus a £7.50 admin fee, which is applied to all flight bookings and is unavoidable. I had also paid £10 to reserve a window seat for filming. An emergency exit row was only £8 more, which was the option I took for the return flight. Look out for that video. That fare limited me to a small piece of hand baggage that could fit under the seat, but that was perfectly adequate for the couple of nights I had planned in Tenerife. In preparing for the four plus hour flight, I'd reckoned that including airport time, I'd be wearing a mask for over six hours. My ears already do a full shift as they accommodate my glasses and my hearing aids. Overloading them further with a mask can be quite uncomfortable and risks catapulting my hearing aids off. I saw a report that insurance claims for lost hearing aids have risen fourfold since mask usage became common, and that report was in the Daily Mail, so it must be true. So I invested in a mask extender, which is easy to attach, well, relatively easy to attach, and which really takes the pressure off the ears. I've put a link to the ones I bought in the description, plus to a set which is just a little bit longer than the ones I bought. A worthwhile investment if you ask me, so check them out. One thing that differentiates Wizz Air right now, although perhaps not in a good way, is that it still has an in-flight magazine. Made from clean paper, whatever that may be. Not sure that even clean paper can eliminate the risk of the virus being transmitted on surfaces, but Wizz Air is obviously not concerned. Amusingly, most of the ads in the magazine were for face masks. The benefit of having a magazine and probably the reason why it's there, is to present the menu. EasyJet in particular has struggled to communicate what was available without a menu. There was a full in-flight service offered, including duty-free. Apart from the passengers and crew wearing masks, there really was very little difference to the service that we received. I'd gambled on a seat on the starboard side, and my bet lost on this occasion as we kept Tenerife and some great views of Mount Tidy to the port side as we curved around the island. The weather was much better than when we took off, so I did get a decent view of the islands of La Palma and La Gomera before we landed.
So it was everybody up the second the seatbelt sign went off. No attempt was made to control the debarkation movement. Off the plane into the lovely Canarian sun. Annoyingly, a Ryan airplane that landed after us parked a few gates closer to the security point, meaning that almost all of their passengers beat us there. It took a while to get through, but that was mainly because the Spanish authorities were being very thorough. First, there was a check that we'd completed the Spanish passenger locator form, then passport control, where I was very surprised to be rebuked for trying to remove my mask to assist the agent in proving I was me. Obviously, the Canarian government prefers to risk passport use fraud than they do to risk virus transmission. Thank you. Then finally, a temperature check, with some people being individually double-checked by the agent. Then we were through. A more thorough process than any I'd experienced previously when travelling during the pandemic. The Canary Islands are thorough in other ways too. Mask use is compulsory in all public spaces, including the outdoors, which might surprise you. But that caution is probably the reason why they are still open for tourism and are one of the few places left in Europe that is. So, out of the airport and off to Los Cristianos for two nights before my flight back. Have a look at that sky. Well worth four hours on a plane, I reckon. So Wizz Air, decent seat, decent legroom, good enough to allow me to take a nap. Helpful way of passing time on a four and a half hour flight. Apart from everyone wearing masks, it wasn't that different to the service you'd have received before all of this. Indeed, Wizz Air is the first airline I've been on that still has an in-flight magazine, which I thought most airlines had decided was a complete no-no. When things go well, a low-cost airline service is virtually indistinguishable from a full-service airline. When things go wrong, that's when you can have problems. Will I travel Wizz Air again? Yes, absolutely. And now they also have a base at Gatwick. They're actually a much more convenient option for me and may feature in my travel plans more regularly as a result of it. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a like. Uh, leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, if you're new, please subscribe. There's no charge and I would very much appreciate it. So I'll see you all again in the next video. Goodbye.